Holy hell, higher side chatters, drinking a little drink, smoking a little smoke, one to open up my mind, the other just to cope. From San Diego, I'm Greg Carlwood, the Dr. Seuss of the conspiracy world, and of all the places you could go today, we're going deep into the trenches of conspiracy goodness with a bona fide living legend to anyone who's been a part of the underground info world in the past two decades. He's been dishing the dirt on the global elite and spilling the beans on their many tools of control in their finely tuned matrix of power. So people might be a little surprised to hear from Mr. Maxwell because he's been pretty silent over the past year or so, and he's had some really frustrating issues with his work and website being stolen, and I'll let Jordan tell you about it. But what we did was a pretty standard THC-style hour-long power plunge into the world that's hidden beneath the smoke and mirrors of society. And then Jordan breaks down why we use the words and phrases we do and how they subconsciously plant deep psychological subservience into the ignorant masses. And then I gave Jordan the floor to talk about the problems he's had in the past year. And I feel like it was pretty touching. I feel for the guy and he's asking for help. This mess has been so hard on the man that he's left the country and is staying with a friend in Central America. And he's given his life to the conspiracy community. Hopefully our community can show that we're part of the next human evolution and we do give a shit. And that's that. But I love the interview. It was a personal milestone for me right on the heels of Professor Griff, which was a blast as well. But I personally just love the way this guy breaks it down. And I look forward to helping get him up and running however I can. And with that said, it's episode 105, which means I've picked a listener out of the last few weeks donors at random and given him half of the pool of donations, which got all the way up to $715. If you remember just last episode, we were only at $250. But the audience responded in a big way. You guys are the best audience in podcasting. I'm fucking so lucky. So I'm going to play a short conversation I had with Carl this round's winner. And on the other side, it's a wild ride of wisdom and wordplay with the one and only Jordan Maxwell. All right, people, I'm here with yet another winner of the Money Bomb. Carl's donated 10 bucks. I randomly picked his name and sent him back 357.50. Carl, thanks for the donation, man, and congrats on winning the bomb. Awesome. You're welcome. Hi, audience. <laughs> so, man, you're you're from Illinois, but you're living in Germany now? Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm a graphic designer for the Evil Empire. I'm sort of uh, <laughs> milking the government tit for a few years to get a trip to Europe, so... Right on. That's cool, though. You've gotten further than I have. Yeah, I've got to do what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> For sure. So, people, uh, one thing they like to hear, because you know these money bombs are made up of everyone's donations. So, have you given any thought to what you might do with a random 350? Um, that's a lot bigger number than I was expecting. <laughs> um, I'm going to give a big chunk back to the show. Oh, um, man. Sort of a, uh, you know, sort of a gift from the universe. So, I want to... Um, <laughs> Right, as a gift to other people, so I'll probably support some other podcasts I'm a fan of. And, cool. Um, um, for myself, I'm going to try and pay off this etching press I just bought so I can uh, bring a little bit of chaos to the world through art. <laughs> yeah, man. So, yeah, I did want to say uh, real quick, though, I was not planning on donating for this money bomb because I'm very near broke at the moment. Mm-hmm. And I remember you mentioning it was only at like $200 on the last show. I was like, oh, God, that's that sucks, man. I'm a guy. <laughs> money because um your shows become something i really do look forward to every week oh thanks and, man yeah everybody needs to know i mean you can't live off of like you know because you're splitting that money too so you can't live off of 200 dollars a week and if you know you go back to the nine to five world then the show's gonna suffer so you know i like to let the pirate generation keep that in mind it's a value for value system so for sure, man. Dude, I, I appreciate that so much. And yeah, obviously, when we're looking at these numbers, we had a serious last minute surge. Several people, I think three people donated $100, like just straight up. And I was like blown away by that. There was one, a couple for 20. And yeah, obviously, we got all the way up to over, a little over 700 bucks. So a lot of people must have had that mindset. But that, I'm, I'm humbled and very thankful. 
Yeah, and like I said, I you know I'm not ashamed to admit I only donated ten dollars, so that's a that's a pretty good um, turnover right there for me. But um, I did intend to donate more on the next one, and so I just wanted to give you what I could. So I want to tell everyone that they should do that too. So for sure, man, I appreciate that. So another thing I like to ask Money Bomb winners is there a favorite guest or a topic you've heard on the show so far, man? Oh man, I'm all, I'm all about the esoteric, so they're all good. Um, uh, Douglas Dietrich's always fun. Freeman Fly. <laughs> um, Professor Griff was great. Um, if you just get uh, Professor Grafton to uh, kind of support his theories, that'd be awesome. But <laughs> I don't know if uh, the bad religion singer there does too many podcasts. Yeah, I was a huge fan of them back in the day. Oh yeah, just uh, saw them uh, a couple months back. Right on. They're still kicking. So, is there any? Uh topic or guest you'd like to see me get that I haven't yet covered? Um, I sort of, I'm on board with the, um, what's the project there with the, um, Sight Guys movie? Oh, the Venus Project. Right, thank you, yeah. Um, I like that, but, um, I'm also very interested in, uh, Stefan Melanou's points and Adam Kokesh, if you're familiar with them, the sort of more anarcho take on the whole system. Yeah, Stefan Monolue, he, he has put out some good stuff. He's got a video, the the uh, history of your enslavement, which is really brilliant. I really love it. So I vibe with him on that so so much. But I just don't think the free market is the answer. But maybe he'd be worth having on. I don't know if you saw, but Peter Joseph from the Zeitgeist Movement and him had a debate about free market capitalism, which is pretty good. It's out there on YouTube. You might want to check that out if you haven't. I like to, uh, I like to hear all sides of the argument. For sure. Well, maybe I'll check them out. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe I'll have a debate with them. Well, very cool, man. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but thanks again for listening and throwing 10 bucks in the pot. I know that times are definitely tough, so that means a lot. And it's a huge help to me. So you're the man, Carl. Take care of yourself. Yeah, no worries. Take care, sir. Folks, we have been exploring this weird and wild world for over a hundred glorious episodes, and I have spoken to some amazing researchers on so many fascinating topics, but today we have who I would consider one of the biggest, most important, and well-known names in the entire conspiracy community. He's been seeking truth since 1959, has conducted dozens of seminars, hosted radio shows of his own, scribed many books, and has been a guest on well over 600 written radio and television interviews and documentaries. If you're looking to understand and expose the hidden knowledge of the elite and the astro-theology origins of the world's religions, the occult rituals of secret societies, the symbolic architecture of the Masons, or the truth about damn near anything they don't want you to know, today's guest is your man, and that man is Jordan Maxwell. It's an honor, a privilege, and a genuine pleasure to have him here. Jordan, my man, welcome to THC. Well, thank you very much for having me. Oh, of course. The, the pleasure is definitely mine. I'm, I'm super excited for this. Thanks for taking the time. You know, you're a wealth of information, and I'm anxious to extract as much of it as I can from you in the short time we have. And there's so many great places we could go. But personally, I was hoping we could start with the framework of our legal system. You've done a lot of work uncovering that and legalese and how we ended up under the thumb of this matrix of power, to use the title of one of your books. But how do we end up in this mess? Well, I, you know, I'm not the world's authority on this at all. I, I just that I have been um, made aware of it many, many years ago uh, when I was far much more younger and I didn't really appreciate the significance of the information at such a young age. But I remembered it and, and then later on I became aware that there were certain individuals I was meeting that were experts on the subject. And so they, uh, we became very close friends, and I began listening a lot closer to uh, the details of how the world really works. And that's what I would say starting off, is the fact that I'm not an authority on any of it. I'm just an ordinary man who's been privileged to be in the company of extraordinarily brilliant people uh, for many, many years on so many different subjects. <clears throat> and so, in that particular subject, I've met about five people that, well, more than that, but five major people that were uh, the real bottom line authorities from which everybody else has learned. And, uh, and, and the more, because I was a little older and began to appreciate deeper the things that are being said, 
it became apparent to me that, that there's a world of knowledge that's uh, been hidden from the world at large. There's an enormous amount of knowledge that never, never been to discuss about where and where things come from. Yeah. How the world actually, in fact, works. And uh, the only thing I would tell you at 74 years old, been looking at this stuff for 53, 54 years now, the one thing I would tell you off the bat is nothing in this world works the way you think it does. <laughs> nothing. nothing. Nothing is what you think it is. And I used to hear, uh, you know, adults when I was a little kid think, oh, yeah, the whole world's smoking mirrors and smoking mirrors. And I heard that, uh, and the world is not what you think it is, it's smoking mirrors. What I, I often wonder, what are you talking about? It's all smoking mirrors. You walk out in front of a bus and it'll run you over. That's not smoke on mirrors, that's real. <laughs> so yeah. there is a real world out there. And so I never understood, what are you talking about? Well, of course, now I understand. Yeah, smoke and mirrors in that uh, so much is hidden from you that if you're not educated in a particular subject, then you don't know what's going on. And, I, and I've said so often that uh, you know how many airline pilots have lost their, their <laughs> lost everything in the stock market? Or how many neurosurgeons and doctors have lost everything in real estate? So just because you're good at what you do, it doesn't mean you know what somebody else knows in their, in their field. And so if you're really wise and, and learn something in life, if you are a genius, a mathematical genius, but if you need to have an operation, you need to go to a doctor who knows how to do what you need. And so you need to understand, just because you think you're smart, don't bet on it. The really bright and powerful people in this world pay large sums of money to other people who they know are far smarter than they are. The Donald Trumps have people around them that uh, know law and know real estate and know the laws far better than they do. And that's why they're paid large salaries to sit next to the boss and tell him what he can and can't do. And so uh, I learned that a long time ago, that just because you think you know something, you better go back and do your homework, because you're going to find out when you finally get into federal court or finally get into some kind of a serious legal uh, situation in a courtroom, uh, you're going to find out what you didn't know. No, you thought that this, and you thought you had that, and you thought you understood. Now you find out, no, the legal words means that you lose, or you're going to jail. That you mm -hmm. thought you understood. The words that you use in a court are not the same, they don't mean the same on the street. And that's why you have to have a lawyer speak for you, mm -hmm. because you don't understand court language. And God knows a lot of people have heard me say this, and I'm saying it again. Why do you have to go to court <clears throat> to start with? You go to court because the whole idea is a is called the commerce game. Look it up mm -hmm. on look it up in a dictionary or look it up on the web. Just type in the word commerce game. And you will see that commerce in the world of business is a game. And in any game there are gonna be losers and winners. Right. And and so uh, and and so we call the losers uh, debtors. The winners are called creditors, creditors and debtors and business. And so you're either making money and on top of something or you're, you lost money and you owe. So there's winners and losers. So when you go to court, it's like playing basketball or tennis on a court. And so uh, how do you play tennis on a court? Well, you play with a racket. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get it? Mm -hmm. Words, terms, symbols, colors, all kinds of hidden persuaders, hidden ideas and concepts in words. So that's why the attorney will tell you that when you're signing a contract, be sure to read the dot, to sign on the dotted line and read the fine print. 
which I haven't done and a lot of people else haven't done and thought <laughs> I understood what I was doing and signed something and then found out I just lost everything. But an attorney will tell you <clears throat> to sign <clears throat> an attorney will tell you to sign on the dotted line uh, and read the fine print. Yes. What is he talking about? He's talking about when you sign a check, you sign on the bottom line, <clears throat> and if you look at it, the bottom line looks like a lot of dots. So you're signing on the dotted line. But get a magnifying glass and look at the line that you're signing, and you will find out they're not dots, they're letters. Really? Yes. And so that's why the attorney says, read the fine print. Yeah, read the line you're, you're writing on, get a magnifying glass and read it. And now you see when you're putting your name on that line, you are signatory to what that line says. Go get a, a magnifying glass and look at a check and, uh, and see what it says in the fine print. And then when you sign it, you become known as a signatory to what you just read. So most people signed on the dotted line and did not read the fine print and had no idea in the world what they were signing up for. And then you find out it has to do with maritime admiralty. And then they can say once you sign it and hand it to someone uh, in England, they say checkmate. Because you just wrote a check to us, right, mate? Yeah. Okay, so you just wrote us a check, mate. And uh, where do you have a mate? Well, you have a mate on board ship. Ships have mates. Well, yes. <laughs> That's kind of where it gets into the really interesting thread as I've heard that I've heard you talk about before is the law of the land versus the law of the sea. Of and the that, sea. Uh, That's right. Law is, uh, or that all commerce... And all these transactions is part of a network of maritime law. Can you explain that a little more? Yeah, maritime simply means of the ocean. And, uh, and in America, there's a concept in, uh, that's called uh, maritime admiralty. Mm -hmm. And it works, all around the, it works all over the world. It works all over the world. But it's called maritime admiralty. There are two things on this earth that compose the earth. On the, if you go out in space and look back at the earth, there's two things you see, water and land, period. So you either have water or you have land. Mm -hmm. And so the land, there are two different kinds of law of them. There are two totally different kinds of law, the law of the land and the law of the sea. And so we've heard that term, law of the land. Well, you can't do this because that's the law of the land. Well, law of the land simply broken down simply means the law of the culture of the people who live on a particular spot of land. So in China, they have their own culture, their own way of doing things. So we call it the law of the land. So if you're going to, you know, if you're in Rome, do as the Romans do. So if you're going to live in China or Africa or Asia or anywhere else in, in, in Russia, you have to learn the customs of the people and how they think and how they do business. So that's the law, I mean, and how they think, that's the law of the land, mm -hmm. because people live on land. However, there is a second law that's far more important. It's the law of water, because water is everywhere. And so the law of water is referred to as maritime admiralty commerce, it's mm -hmm. business. Business is banking, so banks operate under the law of water. So that's why money goes through your hands like water. No, <laughs> money is water. It's the yeah. cash flow. Liquid asset. Liquid asset. Oh. Yeah. And so once you begin to uh, perceive the hidden implications of words and terms that we use every day and never for a moment uh, question why do we use these terms well anytime you're dealing in commerce or business money 
Look up the word commerce in a law dictionary. The word commerce, most people think, means business. Well, yes, that's one interpretation. But the very first understanding of commerce in a law dictionary is sex. Sex, between, hmm. uh, sex is referred to in law as commerce. Look it up in a law dictionary. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So that uh, that's why. <clears throat> so that's why if you uh, you know, when I see you with some young woman that I know, I say to you, you know, uh, I, I, you know, this this girl you're with is very bad company. She's bad company. And you say, mind your own business. We're going to get married, and she's going to be my partner. Partner, business, uh, company. We're talking about a business here. That's right. And what I'm doing is none of your business. So, you know, mind your own business. Mm. She's my partner. And this gets into how it affects the individuals, because we hear about when you're born, you are... Uh... There's a there's a public you and a private you. This gets that's into right. that same thread, right? How does this stuff affect the individual? Well, yeah, and so that's true. So when you're born, uh, the first thing uh, that uh, the hospital does is that they take uh, and roll some ink on the baby's uh, the bottom of the baby's foot and uh, and take an imprint, you know, a, a, an imprint or a photocopy or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> of the baby's foot, of both mm -hmm. both feet. Why? It's because that's what your soul is. They now own your soul. Ah. Yeah, it's the soul of your foot. And so they now, uh, by law, have registered your soul. They own you. And this is before you even put your foot on land, because once a human's foot touches land, once you start to walk, you are now referred to in international law as a man on the land. You are now a, a human creature that has been endowed with certain privileges and rights given to you by the Creator. But until you put your foot on land, <clears throat> you're not, you have no standing in law. <laughs> so therefore you have to be represented by a lawyer uh, who has passed the bar, and he has standing, his feet are on the ground. So it's a very interesting, but I guess the word is arcane, or occult. Occult simply means hidden. Right. Look it up in a dictionary, nothing evil about it. It means hidden. And so much of real wisdom and knowledge, de jure, legitimate wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, has been hidden, just as your parents have obviously hidden a lot of stuff from you when you were a child. You don't need to know about their private life. You don't need to know about your father's business when you're six years old. All you need to know is that they are who the boss is. That's all you need to know. Yeah. And so uh, you don't. You're not being told by your superiors. Well, the same thing as you grow up. All adults are today are grown-up children. And so we have to have a parent who takes care of us. Well, there is a law in, in, uh, in international law. There's a law that's called Parantitras. I think I'm saying that right. There's a law now that you can look it up on, uh, in the dictionary. And that means in law and Latin that the government is your parent. It actually owns you. The government actually, in fact, point of fact, lawfully, and any good uh, constitutional attorney and any good lawyer that's honest with you and intellectually honest will tell you, yes, in point of fact, the government does own your body. Period. Right. So you can think whatever you want if you're ignorant and ill-informed and unread and pompous and arrogant and know everything there is to know about everything in the whole world, uh, then go on and believe whatever you want. But the bottom line is, there will come a day when you will find out you are not the boss and the, and the master of your own destiny. 
you will find that the police can come in, break down your door, arrest you, and put you in jail. Why? Because you don't own you. If you own you, nobody could talk to you, nobody could touch you. But you don't own you. When you were born, you were owned as a maritime admiralty product on the international maritime admiralty law. That's the way the law works. And until and unless you educate yourself as to how this stuff really works, how the word, what the words mean, how the system actually works, you're never going to figure out what's going on on the earth. And, uh, and it's all been hidden. And you are, it's, it, the whole, all of these subjects are what I call need to know. And you don't need to know. All you need to do is go do your job and watch basketball and be like all the others, go to the ball game and drink your beer and have a good time and, uh, and go party. And that's all you need to know until your masters get ready for you. And when your masters want you, they will call for you, like the king. The king lets you do anything you want. You're having fun. You're drinking your beer and doing your street fights and well, play with your motorcycles and all your silly games that you do in, in life until the authorities come for you. And when they come for you, they come with a heavy iron boot. And for the first time, you find out you thought you were Al Capone. You thought you were invincible. You were John Gotti. You thought you were invincible, but you are somebody. You are nobody. And they always get those guys with taxes, too. That's right. All you've got to do is mess up one time, and they got 500 things they can bring you in on. But they let you play out there, let the kids play in the sandbox. But if he gets out of, out of line and he disturbs me, I'm going to go out in the play box and I'm going to do a number on that kid he's never going to forget. <laughs> and so that's the way it works in this world. I don't care how smart you think you are, I don't care if you've got a law degree. You have no idea where the word degree comes from and what the word law means in the ancient, uh, in the ancient tongue. And so, you know, when a, when a guy goes to college and becomes an attorney or a lawyer, there's a big difference between an attorney and a lawyer. One practices in law, one practices at law. Uh, that's why when you get married, you have in-laws. So I don't know where to start because this is such yeah, a yeah. good story. It's right. I, I love, I'm always fascinated with that. Every time you, you throw out a new term that we're so used to using that I've used my whole life and that you put it in that context, it's very curious. I love that stuff. But let me ask you about the masters themselves. You know, these powerful people have carefully laid this hidden framework on us. The control is working, but I want to know who's doing all this. Who's really in charge? Because we have guests who say it's the secret societies or the royal families or the Vatican or the Jewish banking families or even the reptilians, and it all seems a little hazy for me. But where do you think the real power lies in modern times? Where did this get laid down on us? Yeah, no, it's a little hazy for me, too. I've been looking at it for 50 years. <laughs> it's still hazy for me. Uh, I think it's because the system is so old. Nothing uh, comes out of a vacuum. Nothing. Uh, you know, you did not come into the world in an immaculate conception. You had a mother and father. Well, how did they get here? Well, they had a mother and father. Well, how did your grandfather get here? Well, he had a mother and father. So nothing appears in this world that doesn't have, a, you know, a history. And so the, the presence of the powers, the dark, and I do mean dark, the dark powers that are behind the world scenes uh, that the politicians, and especially the higher up ones at the very top politicians, they know what's going on. They know they have masters, and they understand that, and they work with it. And because of that, they're able to do certain things and able to officiate over certain things, always keeping in mind that there are hidden powers that are watching them. Right. And at any time those hidden powers decide that you have served your purpose, you will, uh, you will be removed. Now, if you uh, <clears throat> feel like Nixon, they will remove you. The hidden powers will remove you. 
by disgracing you and, uh, and, and having Senate hearings to, uh, to expose you. Or if you are really smart, well-financed, which uh, Nixon wasn't, but if you're really smart and well-financed and protected, like John Kennedy, well, okay, we'll just whack you then. We'll just blow <laughs> your brains out. Right. So, yeah, now what is the country going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? We blew your, your, your president's brains out in public. Now, what are you going to do about that? Well, somebody's going to go to jail. Who? Well, uh, 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 you know, Lee Harvey Oswald. Okay, then we'll kill him. <laughs> so now who's going to go to jail? Well, the guy, the guy who killed Lee Harvey Oswald, he, uh, he probably knew something. Well, then we'll kill him. Now, what are you going to do about that? So nobody, period, goes to jail but killing Kennedy, period. <laughs> Why? It's because the powers that be behind the world throne have been there for thousands of years. That's why, you know, that's why your father, when you were five years old, was far more superior to you than you will ever have uh, imagined. You can't do much of anything. He is the boss, period. And obviously at work, he has bosses too. And those guys at work who are his bosses, they have bosses. So that's the way it works. You go up the pyramid. We're on the bottom of the pyramid. And you work your way up till you get up to the Donald Trumps and and then from there you get into the international bankers. And from the international bankers you get into the people who run the international bankers, the Vatican, the Jesuits in the Vatican. Then from there you go behind the Vatican to the Roman Empire, to the Caesars of Rome. And behind the Caesars of Rome you have the uh, uh, Pisos family, spelled P-I-C-O-S, Arias Copernicus Pisos and the Pisos family, who were the powers, the international uh, Illuminati powers behind the Caesars of Rome. The Caesars who ruled Rome as emperors were not God. They thought they were God until one of the Caesars got killed by the Senate. So when you understand, you keep going up in power. The higher up you go, the more powerful the people are. <clears throat> and like Michael Carleone said in Godfather 3, on the, at the end of the movie in Godfather 3, Michael is sitting on the porch with his, with his uh, sister, and he says some profound, well, a lot of profound things said in Godfather, but the one thing uh, he says at the end of Godfather 3, he says to his sister, you know, all of my life I have always assumed that the higher up you go in society, the more correct and lawful things have to be. Now I look back on my life and I realize it's just the opposite. Mm. Meaning, the higher up you go in this world, the more criminal it is. Yeah. Until you get to the top of the heap, and there you find the real criminals. These people do not rob uh, you know, with a gun and take uh, 50 bucks from you. No, they rob nations. They take the gold from, uh, from South Africa. They take the diamonds. They take the oil from, uh, from the Middle East. Uh, it's, uh, you know, lust is lust. I mean, you're looking at the girl's butt while they're looking at the bauxite mines in, uh, in South Africa. So, uh, it, you know, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Very powerful men have very powerful... Uh, taste, and uh, while you want that new car, they want Alaska. Right. You know? yeah. So, yeah. you know, so it's it's just it's just uh, it's it's human going all the way up the ladder to the worst humans on the earth. Period. Oh. Now, I personally, it's just my opinion, but I personally believe at the top of the world, if you go up to the top of the pyramid, uh, to the very tip of the top. The most powerful on the earth are not human. Yeah. I believe they are extraterrestrial, meaning they're not from here. They may look like humans. They may, uh, if you ever met one, which you won't. Uh, I, you know, I could go into a lot of stories about that. My wife, when I met her in 1967 and got married in 67, 
That's a lifetime ago. Mm -hmm. She was working as a secretary for a mafia don in Los Angeles. And uh, I met him. She was his secretary. But uh, she was just an ordinary secretary, you know, working for a very powerful man. But she knew who he was, and I, and I learned when I got married who he was. But he and I used to sit and chit-chat and talk and go out to breakfast and lunch uh, because he liked me, uh, because he liked talking with me. Uh, and I liked him because he was very generous and kind and courteous to me and to my wife. And so we had a very, very nice relationship. But I know who he is, and he knows how I know who he is. And, uh, but he would tell me things about the, uh, about the mafia and La Cosa Nostra and the uh, international crime syndicates, of which he was a major player. Uh -huh. And he would tell me, he would tell me, he would say, Jordan, look, at the real people who run this world, you and the world at large, will never... In all of your life, you will never, ever hear their names, see their faces, or know anything about them, period, ever. Not, not the government, not the, uh, not the president, not the, uh, I don't care who, <laughs> not the FBI, nobody. Right. The guys who run this planet are in places you don't even know exist, and they call the shots. And you better believe the people who run this planet are powerful and, and out of sight. So don't even worry about how, you know, trying to figure it out because you ain't never going to figure this out. And so uh, I, I realized, yeah, he's right. Because everybody has a boss, and that boss has a boss. And it, how high up does it go? Well, I am of the opinion that I'm an old man. I've been lucky at it for 54 years. I'm of the opinion. That if you keep having bosses over bosses over bosses, eventually you're going to get back to God. Well, yeah. Eventually you're going to get back to the divine presence, the spiritual dark powers of the air, like the Bible speaks of. And all of the ancient religions and all the religions of the world today acknowledge that there are unseen powers yes. around us. Christians call them demons, devils, and Spirits and, and ghosts and uh, Jews call them, uh, you know, Rephiam and all kinds of words in the Hebrew. And the, in the Islamic world, they're called jinns and uh, are, are genies. Uh, I don't care what you call them. Whatever it is, is not of this world, but they are here. And, and they see you, you don't see them. Mm -hmm. And they let you think that you're in power but they will deal with you anytime they please. So you mess up spiritually, and they will bring you down big time because you don't know who they are. You don't know what they can do. Yeah. And that's why I would advise anybody listening to me, if you have any, uh, if you put any store by my words, I would suggest no one have anything to do with an Ouija board. <laughs> because... A board is probably one of the worst things a human can touch. Why is that? It's like, it's, it's like giving a child a hand grenade and pulling the pin on it and then putting it in his hand and grasping his hand around the grenade and telling him he can play with it. Well, as soon as he releases that, that lever, all the world is going to come to an end for him. Well, that's the same thing I consider the Ouija board to be. It's like a hand grenade in your hand, and you have no idea in the world what you are asking for and what you're looking to do. And when it happens, then you'll find out, but it's way too late. <laughs> so Ouija boards are one, and there's all kinds of dark arts and all the secret societies with their rituals. Right, yeah blood rituals and human sacrifices and, and killing babies. And if you want a taste of that, you can go to uh, the movie Eyes Wide Shut right. and watch that with intellectual, uh, or watch that with a brain. Because the Bible says you have eyes that do not see and you have ears that do not hear. And with your heart, you do not get the sense of it. 
So if you want to go back and see what I'm talking about, I'm going to say, talk about the, the dark side. Go watch the movie uh, Eyes Wide Shut with intellectual uh, acumen, with, the, with your eyes wide open, because that's what the producer was saying. You will, you're looking at the world with your eyes wide shut. You think you know what's going on. You haven't got the famous idea in the world how your mother and your father and you and your brother and your and your wife and your children are owned. Your body as a security on the New York Stock Exchange. And you have no idea how it works. You never were told. And because you're arrogant, self-centered, egotistical, know-it-all and pompous, you would never even consider the fact that anybody owned you. Well, you got another thing coming, son. You better look at, at your children, at your wife, your family, your mother. Everybody on this earth is owned because we are all part of a system. And this system's been around for thousands of years, replicating itself, evolving and mutating and becoming more and more professional with computers now and all kinds of high technology. But the system is the same. It's the same old system of commerce, sex, that was developed in the ancient world, going back to far before the Grecian Empire, way before Rome, going back into the ancient Phoenician Canaanite systems, into ancient India, to the Hindu systems, into uh, Egypt, the Egyptian magical system of commerce, you better wake up and find out that this, what's going on on this earth has been going on for thousands of years, perfecting itself. The Egyptians perfected their magical connections to money, to human resources. Um, mm -hmm. They knew about maritime law. They knew about the law of the sea. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a story. Yeah, it definitely you know? is. And there's so many different threads to it. It's... It's, uh, you know, it takes a lifetime, man, and you've definitely spent your time doing that. But and I paid for it, too, believe me. Right? Yeah. Um, another area I'm really interested in that, that you just kind of alluded to is these otherworldly entities and the where they uh, tie in with the elite. Because it seems like we hear stories, and I've had guests who talk about high up there on the pyramid, there seems to be some otherworldly entities that the elite still worship, that they consider superior. And, um, well, they better. I'm, yeah, and I just, it's just so it's weird. Because, because they are superior. Right, and they keep them so secret from us. Like, who are they, uh, who are the elite worshiping? Well, look at, look at, first of all, uh, I tend, I tend to, I want to say this right so people don't go out and say I said something I didn't say, but I tend to appreciate and understand. It doesn't mean I'm happy with it. It doesn't mean I agree with it, but I at least am intellectually astute enough to understand it and to appreciate the concepts that uh, the elite, uh, there's a reason why we call them L. But uh, the elite are not sharing this kind of knowledge. And they have their own world of worship and, and their own world that they live in. But I am of the opinion that I understand the elite's conceptual ideas about why they don't tell us, why we're not being informed, and why they, the elite, form themselves into secret societies. Let me explain that's what, that's what you do. You do the same thing that they do. They just do it better than you. They do it on a bigger scale than you. And when I say you, I mean the world of mankind, all of us. They, right. Regular humans will steal a couple of bucks here or, or lie about a couple of bucks there on their own income tax or, or keep something that they know is not theirs but it's not that big a deal. Well, that's what they do. They steal the bauxite mine from Africa. Uh, you know, they steal the gold mines from uh, from California. Uh, you know, it's not that big a thing. But uh, so it's the same. They're just big, and what we are is small. 
And so uh, when you understand how the elite think, I understand it. Uh, I'm not happy with it, but I understand it. They, the elite, look at us, the people, for and see, in fact, what we are. And they treat us accordingly, like you. You have your personal friends that you like, that uh, mm -hmm. that are into you know that are on the same wavelength you are, that you can talk to, that you can have fun with, and that they understand what you can understand. They and so you get along with them great. You're nice to other people, but you have your personal friends that you enjoy being around. Why? Because they're like you. You you like them. They're like you. The same thing for the elite. They deal in the world that they deal with, but they have a special secret group. And and I understand that. I do too. I have I have a handful of people around me that are my personal friends for many years. I love them dearly. I trust them with my life. And we've been friends for many years, and that's just the way it is. Humans have friends. And good friends, real friends. And so, so do they, the elite. But they realize they're not, they, they don't want you uh, in their personal company because first of all, you're not on their level. You don't have the money they have. You don't have the experience that they have. You don't have the position of authority they have. As a matter of fact, you don't have much of anything that they have. So in what way would they be uh, wanting your uh, your company. The same thing is true with uh, people tell me all the time when I'm talking about UFOs, which is one of my favorite subjects, but people will say to me, if there are aliens here, why don't they come down and show themselves and talk to us, you know, and explain to us so that we would understand? To which I answer and say, look at, I'm human like you are, and I don't want to talk to <laughs> I don't even like being in your company myself, and I'm and I'm human like you are. I wouldn't give you the time of day either. <laughs> so can you imagine someone who is so far superior to you and has evolved 100 million years ago on another planet and another world that is so far superior to you that they look like God? Why would they want to come down? Like, when was the last time you sat down on a sidewalk in your city and try to discuss uh, Einstein's theory of relativity to an ant uh, colony. <laughs> why, would the, why would you make yourself look like a fool trying to talk to ants? Well, why would alien life forms who are millions of years in our future, probably far, far smarter than we are, because they came here, we didn't go there. They found us in this God incredible, huge universe. They found us, we didn't find them. We got our little Mickey Mouse uh, dishes out there looking for Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse. Well, these entities have come from millions of light years away. They are far superior to you. They have no intention of talking to you. They may eat you, but they're not interested in con conversing with you. Well, the same thing is true for the, uh, for the elite in this world who are running the planet. They don't have time to be in your company to enlighten you. And the most important reason why is because they know you're too stupid, you're too ill-informed, unread, self-centered, egotistical, self-aggrandizing, ignorant, and you and you have and you have no respect whatsoever for power, for knowledge, for wisdom. You're just good for your baseball games and your beer drinking and your parties. And you're worrying about your taxes and paying your bills and and uh, and arguing with your wife and slapping your kids and and so why would higher intelligent people in this world have anything to do with you? They view right. us as useless eaters, which actually, in point of fact, begins to look like the case. We just keep reproducing ourselves on the earth by the millions, and those millions have millions of more babies, and more babies have more babies, until one day you've got seven and a half billion people 
which are going to replicate themselves and, and reproduce themselves into 14 billion people. Right. That 14 billion people will replicate and reproduce themselves into 28 billion people. <laughs> and the best part about it is that the 28 billions of people will look at the world that they live in just like it's always been here. We've always had 7-Eleven stores. We've always had grocery markets. We've always had uh, a new car dealership. This is the way the world has always been for 1,400,000 years, is we've always had the grocery stores and supermarkets and Sears and, uh, and fresh water and baby diapers. We've always had that for at least 500,000 years. We've always had this, and it will always be the same. Well, I got news for you, son. You better wake up and find out America has not always been here. <laughs> right. Over 250 years ago, there was no uh, United States of America. Yeah. There was no freedom. And I got news for you. What you thought you had, it's gone. You are not free. We're not living in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Like Dick Gregory says, you ain't free or brave. <laughs> you are owned. Yeah. You don't think so? Go out and try it. So the point I'm making, that's why you have to have a permit to do this. You've got to have a permit to mow your lawn. You've got to have a license to do this. You've got to have a, a license to do that. You've got to check with the county board, board of commissioners. If you're going to do this, you've got to check with this, uh, the secretary of state. If you're going to do that, you are in a system. And that system has come to us, come down to us from thousands of years ago. Our monetary system. You know, when you're writing on a piece of paper the, uh, 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 an amount of money, you always uh, put in front of the amount, you put a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a little icon, mm -hmm. uh, which symbolizes money, right? And it looks like an S with a line to it, an I to it. And sometimes it's got two I's through the S. You understand what I'm talking about? Right, right. Okay. Well, originally, it was not two lines. Originally, if you go back to the reference books and look it up like I do, you will find that it was not two lines. It was one line. Okay. And so you have an S with one line through it. The line is the letter I. And the S stands for, uh, it's I, S, is. That's what is, is. I-S. I-S stands for insurance script, like scripture, mm -hmm. something you write. So I is insurance and S is script. So money is referred to in international elitist circles, not for us, but the guys who run the planet, it's called insurance script. Insurance script came into being in 1871 before your great-grandma was born. <laughs> and it was called insurance script. And it's based on the idea that your body, your physical body, is worth money. You are worth money. Right. We call it slavery. No, I can buy. And we still have slavery in many ways. Slavery is not gone. No. You buy a prostitute. What is that? It's slavery. She's selling herself to you for money. Well, the same thing you do when you go to work. You're selling yourself to someone else, and for eight hours, they own you. You don't tell them. They tell you. And so it's all based on commerce. Commerce is sex. Uh, and, and, and also, if you look at the dictionary, uh, look in the law dictionary, all of our laws uh, in commerce are under the auspices of what we call the Congress. Congress uh, regulates commerce. The word Congress, which regulates commerce, commerce is sex. Congress means, in a law dictionary, sex. Mm -hmm. Look it up in a law dictionary, look up the word Congress, and that's why you have to have an act of Congress. It's a sexual act. Ah. 
And so, yeah, and so it all has to do with water, maritime admiralty, because you are 72% water. And so since <laughs> you are a, yeah, you're a water, pure water product. And you are a biological battery. You have an electrical system in your, in your body. I don't know if you understand that or not, mm -hmm. but yeah. your heart is beating because of an electrical impulse. Your muscles move in your legs and your arms and you live because of electricity. Right. L. L leads. L lect. You get L lected with electricity. So follow my thinking. So you are a biological battery. So when you go into court, you are now, you are, that's why you have a, a fence and a gate and a court. People go to court never ever suspecting that the reason why they're sitting on this side of the fence and then and when you're called, you get up and walk through the gate. Uh, now you're in hot water <laughs> and somebody's going to have to bail you out. So if you can't make bail, then they're going to put you in a battery. It's called a cell. So they're going to put you in a cell because you're a maritime amplity water product, and they're going to put you as an electrical unit. They're going to put you in a cell. That's what we call batteries. Right. And so, and so, and all of this has to do with an arcane, occult, hidden world of knowledge, which most people on the earth don't even begin to understand the word occult, much less the implications of it. So I'm saying that when you go to a bank, why do you have to put money into a bank? And where did the word money come from? Well, all of this sounds like, uh, all of this I know sounds like, like trivia pursuit. Well, you think it's trivia? Wait till they bring your butt into a federal courtroom. <laughs> True. Wait till you are summoned by the, by the federal government and get, a, and get a letter from the Department of Justice that you are being indicted under federal law, and you see how trivial this information and knowledge is. For well, the first time you wake up and find out, son, you're not living in a trivial world. There are people who own you, and they're allowing you to have fun and do your beer drinking and go to ball games as long as you remember who the boss is. <laughs> and so my kind of knowledge is not trivia. It's deadly. Because once you understand how this world works, and where it all came from, and what the words really mean, and how this world system actually works, then you're going to see this is not trivia. This is deadly. Mm -hmm. This is real stuff that Jordan Maxwell has been dealing with for over 50 years. And people, most people hearing me have no idea in the world of the implications of what I'm talking about. But at 74 years old, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I just do what I do, and if you're smart enough to figure out what I'm talking about and wake up, then, uh, then more power to you. If you're not smart enough, I don't care. So my feeling is, if somebody's supposed to hear me, they will. If they're not supposed to hear me, they won't. I leave that up to God. I don't care anymore. I just do what I do. Yeah. But you need to understand that your life is based on water. And so... You came down the birth canal, and your mother's water broke. Ah. So you came out, yeah, you came out of your mother's water. Yeah. And so you came out as a maritime water product. You came down the canal, a water broke, and you are now a maritime admiralty product. You're 74% water. Wake up. Therefore, if you're going to live in this world, you've got to be on a ship. Because the, the earth is considered, on the international law in Europe, the earth is considered a ship in space. It's called a vessel. A vessel in space. That we are on a ship. Mm -hmm. It's called a spaceship. We are sailing through the universe on a vessel. This is why you are sailing through life through a blood vessel. Your, your blood is your vessel. Your body is your vessel. And the blood is the water on which you are floating in life. Mm -hmm. So you have a blood vessel. You are a vessel. And so since you are a vessel, that means you're a ship. 
So if you're going to be alive and work with us and live with us here, then you're going to be a citizenship. So you have to join the citizenship, and then you can uh, then you can get a scholarship, uh, courtship, uh, you know, go down the line, a dealership, all kinds. Of, look at all the words that end in ship. I mean, I had a whole about thirty or forty of them. Right. Companionship, scholarship, marksmanship. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of ships. Why? Because the whole world works on water. Period. Right. Including your bank. Where do you find a bank? You know, you go to a bank and you're signing on the dotted line that you didn't read the fine print. Well, where do you find water? You, you, where do you find a bank? You go to a bank. How many people go to a bank and have no idea where, where the word bank comes from? Mm -hmm. First of all, a bank is on both sides of a river. It's called a river bank. What does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current. See? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because your money is liquid asset. It's a current. Ebb and flow. It takes them in, puts them out. It comes in, goes out. But once you understand that you are a product, uh, a human developed product, your mother, first of all, your father, man, M A N, man, you factor you. And your mother was in a delivery room. Mm. She delivered the product. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so she's in a delivery room and she's in labor. Wow. She's building you. She's in labor delivering the product <laughs> that your father, man, you factor. Get it? Yeah, man. And so once you see that, uh, and then you will become a maritime amplity product. Money goes through your hands like water. You uh, and in order to be a good Christian, you have to be baptized, which means you have to go back into the lake or into the pool and go back into your mother's water. Go back into Mother Earth, Mother Nature. The Earth is your mother, so you go back to your mother's water to be born again. Get it? Yeah. So when you begin to see how religion works. How the churches work. What is a synagogue? Where do mosques come from? Who are the Islamic peoples? What is, why do we call them Arabic? What, is the, what do these words mean? All I'm telling you is the entire world you live under, you don't understand nothing. Right. And in, in terms of us being products, you mentioned this earlier that each person is traded on the New York Stock Exchange. That's right. How literal is that? And who's trading us? International banks who own you, the corporation that owns you. Uh, there's a, well, that's a whole story in itself. Just go on the <laughs> web. Just go on the web to, uh, to uh, U.S. Just type in this. U.S. is a corporation. That's okay. all. Very simple. Yeah. Go on the web. U.S. is a corporation. Read it all. And then go on the uh, go on YouTube and type in the same thing. U.S. is a corporation, and listen to the next five hundred hours of lectures <laughs> explaining. You know, it's maybe a thousand hours right. of all kinds of experts around the world explaining maritime admiralty corporations, how the governments work, how banks work, where do we get the word money from? It comes from. Money comes from the Roman goddess Juno, like Juno, Alaska. Mm -hmm. When Juno in Rome, there was a goddess named Juno Monita. And Juno Monita had a temple on, the, on something called Capitoline Hill. Capitoline Hill in Rome was the seat of power for Caesar. Caesar ruled the Roman Empire from a place called Capitoline Hill. In English, it's called Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. So the more we change, the more we stay the same. We <laughs> still have a Capitol Hill. Well, go look up in a, in a go to a dictionary, a lava, or no, go to an encyclopedia and get an encyclopedia and read about the Roman Empire. And it will tell you that Caesar ruled Rome from Capitol Hill. 
and that it was said in Latin in Rome, every morning Caesar, quote, would go up on the hill, end quote. Well, that's what we still say today. Well, up right. on the hill today, they said, what are you talking about, up on the hill? That is a word taken from the Latin for the realm of Caesar on Capitol Hill, Capitoline Hill. Mm -hmm. So we are a Roman Vatican Jesuit operation. We call it the United States. as a Vatican uh, Jesuit Vatican operation. But happily, the Jews don't know that. They think they are run everything. Happily, the Muslims don't know that. They think they run everything. Happily, the white folks, the, red, the white Americans, they think they run everything. No, actually, your masters who own you is the Vatican and the Jesuit and what we call the Knights Templars or the International Order of High Finance out of Europe and Asia. We're talking about secret societies that have been around for thousands of years and perfected itself under the Roman Empire, under Caesar, and eventually perfected itself after the fall of the Roman Empire. It mutated into what we call the Vatican, and today the Vatican gives us what we call canon law, which is the basis for maritime admiralty law, which is the basis for insurance companies and the Federal Reserve. You need to wake up and find out what's really going on here, son. <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I love this stuff, and the material is so dense and so vast, but uh, we're getting pretty deep into the show. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the elite themselves. There's a lot of speculation about what they're up to today. I mean, we talked about uh, they might be dealing with extraterrestrials, they might be dealing with otherworldly entities that they worship, but we also hear that they have a lot of secret technologies, that they might be years beyond us, and they're doing all kinds of strange things, maybe teleportation and colonizing Mars. Are you privy to any of that information, or have you, yes, have you had am, people come? Yes, I am. Yes, I have been in the company of astronauts, scientists, physicists. I belong to organizations. I belong to some very prestigious organizations uh, because they like me, and I like them, and they allow me to be a member. <clears throat> and to listen to them and hear them, what they're doing. I'm not privy, so you don't have to worry about assassinating or killing. I'm not privy to any of the real dark stuff, and neither, neither is anybody else. But I am privy to know a lot of very powerful people in government and science and astronauts, as I said, and I sit and talk with them, and I've heard them for years. I used to sit for hours uh, listening to scientists um, uh, talk about things that nobody's ever heard. So, yeah, I understand what's what basically what's going on. But I also understand, and got it down, that uh, you talk about some of this stuff and they will whack you. you know, right. You, you could get, if they'll, first of all, they'll throw you in jail. If that doesn't work, they'll just kill you. <clears throat> and I understand why. But, but anyway, in answer to your question, yes. Um, the technology, understand this, the best technology that we have today, the best of the best uh, that we have today is, is uh, technology that the government had many years ago and doesn't use it anymore. Mm -hmm. But it cost the government money. They had to pay the scientists and provide them with the equipment and, and, and laboratories and all that. And that cost an enormous amount of money to finance the scientific community around the world to develop high technology. So therefore, the governments, and especially the international banks that finance the governments, they are putting up the money for science to do its job. They're building the observatories and the laboratories and financing the, all the stuff for the scientists of the world. They want their money back. It would be nice if they can make their money back. So mm -hmm. they do. They do. When the information that is developed by these scientists from around the world and all this high technology, that's what the government wanted. That's what they're paying for. That's what the bankers wanted. <clears throat> but now that they've got that information, newer technology is coming out, better technology. We have Mickey Mouse uh, IBM stuff back in the World War II, but today's computers uh, you know, don't even you can't hold a candle for what right. they they used to have. And so today, 
the, uh, the top technology we are given today in the stores today is technology that the government doesn't need anymore. It's junk. So they give it to us. And we think, wow, man, we're on the cutting edge. You are, you are on the cutting edge. But your masters don't need this crap. They've got <laughs> stuff you have no idea the world they've got. The wrong end of the cutting edge. <clears throat> That's not. So the, uh, the head, the president of Skunk Works, when he retired, this is out there on the web, and it's been, uh, you know, a lot of people know this. <clears throat> the head of Lockheed Skunk Works, when he retired, I think his last name was Kelly. I'm trying to remember exactly. But he said in his uh, retirement speech, we have already taken E.T. home. Period. Yeah, I've heard that. And, he's, and then, yeah, so what does that mean? Well, E.T. came from out there and E.T. wanted to go home. Well, we've already gone there. We just didn't tell you. And so, well, how did you do it? We didn't see any rockets. No, no, no. So you use rockets. We put those big boosters out there for you to see. So that impresses children. They all get their American flag to run out there, all these uh, alcoholics and beer drinkers, and they all go out there and watch the big rocket take off and blow out millions and millions of tons of highly toxic fumes that's killing the planet. But it looks very impressive to all the beer drinkers and all the party glory and all the goofballs and ill-informed, unread Americans. They, they, think it's, they think it's very impressive, so they watch the rocket go up. No, no, we've got technology, son, that you don't even begin to understand. The elite are not of uh, many things, but stupid ain't one of them. <clears throat> and so that's why you have places like Area 51 and S4 and all of these top secret bases. I've been out there. I know what's out there. I've seen it. And so I know what's, what's going on in this world. And believe me, it's frightening because you have no idea in the world how technically advanced some people on this planet really are. And I'm just saying people. I don't know who they are. Because they've got technology that they look to me like gods. They can right. do stuff that you cannot even believe. Are there <clears> any <throat> examples of that technology you can safely yeah, give? Yeah, as a matter of fact, Gordon Cooper, the astronaut, the national hero, Gordon Cooper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Absolutely, yeah. I've got a private conversation that he was involved in, uh, and and he was in, uh, he was uh, he was being interviewed for a television show, and and uh, and but on the TV show he was only on for about three or four or five minutes at the most of an hour show, and it was on UFOs and all that kind of thing. And so I I got a copy from the producer. Of the of the uh, whole show. That's a long time ago, but uh, in it he was talking off camera. He was talking about some of the really high tech stuff that nobody knows about, and um, nobody's ever heard of this before. But he said um, he said I was in uh, Virginia. He was talking to the person interviewing him off camera. And he said, yeah, I was in Virginia a couple, a couple of months ago, and I dropped by to see a scientist friend of mine that I had known for many years, a good friend, but he works for the government at this uh, particular secret laboratory in Virginia. And he said, so I dropped by to see him. This is Gordon Cooper, the astronaut. <laughs> right. And he says, my friend said, I guess, and he said, well, he had this, I, he had this metal table, looked like an exercise table and some all kinds of high, you know, high class equipment. And he said, I asked him, what's the table for? Looks like, you know, where you create Frankenstein. And he said, no, I'll show you what it is. He said, so he went over to a cage and got a dog and put the dog on the table and locked the dog on the table with a little chain, locked him on. <clears throat> and, uh, and he said, so go sit over here and watch. And he turns on this machine and, and Gordon Cooper said, I saw this dog with my own eyes disappear in front of me. And then he took me down the hallway. He took me down the hallway to another room, looked very similar, another table. And he said, sit over there. 
and he turns on the machine, and after a little while, it, it, it's up to par, and he says, and I have slowly but surely began to perceive an image on the table until finally the dog was fully there. I personally saw a dog disappear and reappear in another room. Wow. So I know, so he said, I know that we have the technology to decompose uh, molecular structure of a living creature and recompose it uh, in another place. That I know for sure, I saw it. Wow. So I'm saying to myself, if this is Gordon Cooper, the astronaut, and he's telling this in, uh, off, off, off record, then this is telling me that we have technology today. That was a long time ago, I, I you know, that was said. Mm -hmm. But today, there is technology that would blow your mind. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. We know that the Japanese are working on uh, computers that don't even exist. It's in the air, and you, uh, you, you know, you can type stuff into the air, and you can see the computer in the air. It's not even there, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and it's all kinds of interesting stuff. But then they have. I mean, I, I can tell you some of the most extraordinary stuff going on. Um, I, I don't even know where to start with this because <laughs> I'm not the world's foremost authority on any of this. How about None anything? Uh, how about anything in the realm of tapping into another dimension or opening some kind of gateway? I've heard rumors oh, of stuff like God. that. Anything you could tell us about that? Oh, of course. The, the, they did that with the Philadelphia experiment. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. I talked with, I was close friends with, he's still alive, I'm not going to give his name. He's still alive, he's a major, major name in the science community, and I do mean major. And I was close friends with him, I used to go to dinner with him and many other scientists like him. And one night in Pasadena, we were at dinner and, uh, and talking about, and I'm not talking, I don't know from nothing, but I'm in the presence of a bunch of of profoundly important people, and I'm listening to them and, and happy to be in their company that, that they are talking in front of me. And so when the conversation quieted down, <clears throat> I spoke up, you know, and I only opened my mouth to change feet. And so I said to him, <laughs> uh, I said, well, I said, what can you tell me? I addressed this to my friend, the physicist, who is a, a world class I said, what can you tell me about the Philadelphia experiment? And he said, Jordan, I'm not at liberty to talk about that. Well, being stupid and younger, I, I didn't realize. So I opened my mouth again and I said, well, <clears throat> I don't want any national secrets, of course, but is there anything you can tell me? And he said to me in front of everyone, Jordan, listen to what I'm saying. I'm not at liberty to talk about that subject. So please drop it. And I was, of course, obviously and correctly ashamed. It made me look like a fool in front of everybody else. But in point of fact, he answered my question. For a few years later, when I was a little older, I began to look back on that and I thought, you know, he answered my question. And the way he did it was very simple. Yeah. I asked him, what can you tell me? And he said, I can't tell you nothing, so shut up. Well, that, tells, something me, there. that tells me what I needed to know, so shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it must be serious if this man is not talking. And why? Because there was a lot of people around the table. He was a good friend of mine and probably, possibly would have told me in private. But because there were a lot of people around the table, he... He was very, very right in assuming there might be a plant here. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody is here that's uh, monitoring what I say. So I'm going to let everybody know I ain't even talking about that, period. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> but um, one of the most important scientists that was connected to the Philadelphia experiment, and of course I know Al Bielik for years, and he and I have done seminars together. I've done many seminars with Al Bielik. Uh, we did seminars together with uh, with, with uh, Preston Nichols, Al Bielik, and myself back in uh, Philly. We did a couple long weekends together. 
But uh, I, I've known all of these people for many years. I've sat and talked with them. So I know basically what's going on here. And what is actually happening is frightening. Because I realize that my fellow man, my fellow countrymen, have no idea in the world what's going on and what the technology is. And, and it's, it's a shame to have to say this about Americans and about mankind in general, but it's true that people have no power to do anything. <laughs> America is powerless. The American people have no, zero, no power to do anything. You just shut up and go to work and pay your bills and drink beer and go out to the ball game and enjoy life and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> okay? And if we want anything out of you, we'll knock it out of you. And so, uh, and so it's, it's unfortunate that American people, especially my own people, the Americans, of which I love my, uh, the country, I love America, what it did for me and my family. I love my country. But, um, but the people of America have no power because knowledge is power. And they have no knowledge. If, well said. If, you know, but if you understand, if you had knowledge about how this world really, in point of fact, works, if the people of America ever woke up and found out how this stuff really works, and then you would be frightened. Then you would see why I am so depressed and frightened, mm -hmm. because I know things you don't know. And uh, so... It is, it's, it's quite a story. That incidentally, that's why you have to get a license when you get married. Same reason why you have to license when, when you uh, are going to be an attorney, a lawyer, or do anything, you've got to get a license. And because a license is a permit to do something which without that permit would be unlawful. Mm -hmm. So it's unlawful for you to pick a woman and live with her. It's not lawful. Right. So therefore, you have to have a license. Why? Because what you don't know is your body. We'll go back to that for a moment. <laughs> your body is a corporation. Right. That's why when you die, you are a corpse. Because you're a corporation. Your body is a company. And that's why I said your, your girlfriend's body. I, I say she's bad company. <laughs> and you say, mind your own business. Oh, you're doing business with her? Yeah, she's going to be my partner. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? What kind of business are you doing with her? Monkey business? What kind of business are you doing? Well, if you're doing business, you might produce a product. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. yeah. Full circle. Yeah, full circle. And wow. now... Therefore, if your body is a corporation and she is a corporation, then that means two businesses, of which it ain't none of my business, but two businesses are getting together to do business. Well, remember, like the mafia says, it's nothing personal, it's just business. So if your business with her don't seem to work out, you're not going to God, you're going to court. And bring the money and your house and your car and everything else you own because it's just business. Nothing personal. Wow. She was a corporation. A corporation. And you are a corporation. And for two corporations like General Motors and Ford Motor Company getting together to create a new product, that's fine. You can do that, but you better talk to the lawyers first. <laughs> you better get your legal team at General Motors to look at what you're going to do with Ford, and Ford better look at their legal team and look at the laws and the federal laws and the international monetary laws to see what you're going to do is going to be legal with the powers that be. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. So that's why you have to have a license because you're getting ready to do some business. Wow. Man, and you make that, it seem so simple, but it's, yeah, it's obviously been so hidden, but you make it seem so clear. Well, it is clear once you study it for 50 years. Yeah. 
Um, well, hey, man, this has been great. I, we're getting kind of close to the end of this interview. Obviously, I had a ton, ton of stuff I wanted to ask you about the elite and about the world, but let's take some time to talk about your personal life and what's going on with you because you have so many fans and there's a lot of confusion about what's happening with you and your court cases. And I told you we'd take some time to clear the air. Uh, is there anything you'd like to tell the people about what's going on with you? Well, you know, I, it's just amazing to me. People are able to do things to me because I'm an old man, 74 years old. I can't see very well anymore. Don't hear very well either. But uh, being an old man, people, younger people can do things to me because I'm an older man. And they get away with it. While if I try and tell someone what's happening to me, uh, I sound like an old man crying in his beer. Mm. And so I, I hesitate to tell the world what's actually happening to me because I know I get a, I get emails from people say why don't you do, you know just uh, dry up you're always talking about you know you're telling us about your private life we don't care about your private life just go on and talk to us and tell us all this information that you're giving to us for free so it doesn't cost us anything we'll sit and listen to Jordan for hours and learn all kinds of wisdom and knowledge. Well, we don't want to hear about your private life. We don't care if you're dying, if your mother died. We don't care one way or the other. And if somebody ripped you off and stole everything from you, who cares? Just keep just talk to us about your work. Oh. And so that's and so I've had so many emails and and you go on blogs, uh, all the different blogs. That's why I pulled off the uh, comments. On my uh, on my Jordan Maxwell show, I pulled out the uh, the blogs and the the comments because mm -hmm. most of the comments were saying things like that. We don't care about your private life. We don't care what's going on with you. Mm -hmm. Just talk I to us about your work. We want to be entertained. Oh, that's super sad, but I think that that's obviously, that's got to be the m minority of people. I think a lot of people really do respect you and do really love your work and really want, and they do care about your well-being, man. I think that the majority of people, uh, they do they do care about you, I, I believe. Well, I know, and I know you're right. I, I know that, but it, 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 it hurts my feelings. It hurts my heart. Of course. To see people writing me on, on my own website saying uh, things like they did uh, the you know the one that finally took the took the straw and I and I just had my people take take the uh, the comments off completely somebody wrote me and said why don't you get a, a coffin somewhere and go die oh my god why don't you just get a coffin all that silly crap you talk about all that law stuff and bull bull crap it's all a bunch of baloney why don't you just go get a coffin and go die and that's so just people. Thought, you know, that's people projecting their own frustrations because we just talked about for an hour and a half how stuck people are, and I think that they're just projecting that onto you. And I know it can sting, man. I know it can. I get messages like that too. You get a thousand good ones and one bad one. You remember the bad one. That's it, exactly right. <clears throat> the good men dies with them. The bad lives on forever. Yeah, you know? not right. So, but what's happened to me is that uh, I've been uh, torturously interfered with. Uh, I had an e I had a, a a webmaster, young man, 28 years old, uh, ponytail, considering himself to be a brilliant orator and a brilliant uh, intellectual. He's just a kid, 28 year old, and uh, but he he's got a delusion of grandeur, and but he was uh, he came to meet me one day and said, "Oh my God, I just love what you're doing, Jordan. I just think you're the best," and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And I was sleeping on the floor in an airbag in one dirty room in, in, in Tarzana, California. Only got nothing, own nothing, have nothing. I have no, I have no, no uh, credit cards, no property, no home, no family. Got zero, nothing. At that particular time, I was sleeping on a floor with nothing. And he came and he thought he was going to come see a big. Uh, uh, <laughs> A movie star, some big shot movie star. He found out, no, no, I paid a dear price to be who I am. And so he said, Oh my God, he said, Let me help you. Oh, I want to help you. And I said, Well, that would be nice. I wish somebody would help me. Oh, I want to help you. He said, Let me know. What can I do? And I said, Well, I'd like to have a, you know, get my website back and get back to work. Oh, I'll get, uh, I'll be a webmaster. Let me do that. 
and let me do this and I'll do that. And I said, well, I need somebody to do fulfillment, to, to fulfill the orders. Oh, let me do that, I'll do that. So I said, okay, I'll give you 50% of everything if you'll just handle my website for me and fulfill the orders. Whatever, whatever, whatever we make, uh, you keep half of it. I was trying to be generous. Half, 50%. Then after I, I give him all the information about my website, he goes in behind my back, and because he's got his own passwords, he's got his own username, I don't, I don't know what his username is, I don't know what his password is, so I give him my website, he goes in, and he now controls my website because he's my webmaster. But what I don't know is that he changed the password so it's no longer my password, he changed the username, so it's no longer my username. Now, I, I'm i locked out. The next thing he did is go in there at the back end of the, of the website and put his his name as the owner, his name as the contactee, his name as the guy who owns it all and controls it all. And I didn't know wow. that, that he changed it all to his ownership. Then what he did is he took my email of which I had about 24,000 names of people I've been dealing with. He took my email and rerouted, I didn't know, rerouted my email to himself. And so people uh, would write me personal things, uh, you know, to my email. It was going to him, not to me. And then I found out he took my money. And then I found out from a friend of mine who, who did the checking for me, that my uh, all of my products, my videos, my books, and everything I've done, everything I've worked to produce, he he sent affidavits to Washington D.C. and copyrighted everything I own. So now he owns everything I did, everything I've ever done. He owns it. He's copyrighted. Oh my God! Then then he went behind my back. All of this is readily available on the web. Go to the copyright office and type in my name. You'll see all of my work is copyrighted by someone else. Then he went to the uh, trademark department, Washington, D.C., filled out an affidavit under penalty of perjury on a federal document saying that he was the one that came up with the name Jordan Maxwell. It's his creation, so he wants to trademark that name. So he was going to trademark my name so that he owns my name, not only my money, my website, my email, everything else, and my products, but now he owns me. He owns my name. Wow. Well, the feds caught him on that one. That one he got caught on because he filled out an affidavit on the penalty of perjury on a federal document because he's such a brash criminal, he couldn't care less. He's a 28-year-old, ponytail, arrogant criminal. And so they caught him on that one. And, they, and the uh, trademark department called and said, did you give uh, Joseph Dolezal uh, permission to copy or to trademark your name? I said, I did not. And they said, well, we didn't think so, because we turned this over to our legal department. This boy has filed, filed an affidavit on the penalty of perjury. We're turning this over to our, uh, our legal department. So then he, you know, now he backs off of that one. You know, the feds finally caught him on that one. So at this point uh, in my life, I don't own my website. I don't have any private emails. It all goes to him. He's been promoting uh, my videos while he's, uh, while he's liable in my name in public. And so and, people know uh, this is so people know this is jordanmaxwell.com, right? All the things that are for yeah, sale at jordanmaxwell.com, all the the donations yeah. that are being solicited on jordanmaxwell.com, that does not go to you, correct? No, uh, at all. For 40 years I've never seen a nickel. I don't own it. I have nothing to do with it. And he sends out uh, 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 emails asking for donations saying, uh, hi, this is Jordan Maxwell, I really appreciate everything you do, and I really would, uh, I need uh, some financial support. So then I, now that I, I, I have my own email for the first time, I'm getting a lot of emails from across the country saying, Jordan, we've been sending money for, for the last four years, donations here, donations there, thinking it was you. Now we find out that says Joseph Dolezal has been taking the money. And we've been buying products off of your website thinking it was from you. 
Now we find out that you haven't owned nothing for four years. This guy, so that's mail fraud. You can wow. go to prison for that. Yeah. That's that's jail time. <clears throat> that's jail time. So you are getting this worked out, correct? This is gonna uh, have a good ending for you, I, I hope. Well, I hope so too. But uh, four years I've been hoping, and nothing's happening yet. But the only thing that is happening is that I have a, a, an attorney, which I was introduced to, who is a uh, an entertainment copyright attorney. That's what he does, and he's a very good one in Los Angeles. And because I happen to have a mutual friend who introduced me to him, and he took a look at what was going on in my life and what's happening to me, and he was shocked, and he said, this guy is a criminal. He's not only taking money, he's, he's lying, mail fraud, uh, torturous interference, uh, you know, filling out federal documents under penalty of perjury. This guy is, in, is a top-of-the-line criminal. Then we found out, the attorney found out, he's got two other federal convictions already. Oh my and God. so, yeah, he's already got two, uh, two uh, felonies. So then, the, you know, my lawyer said, look, at, let me take this case. I don't care if you can pay me or not. Somebody's got to stop this guy. Somebody's got to put him in jail. Give it to me. Let me have it. And I said, I don't have any money. He stole my money, too. He's, you know, he owns everything. He said, I'll take it anyway. Give it to me. I'm going to put this guy in jail. Give it to me. So I did. So now I've got a great top of the line lawyer. It's on my website, his name. And, uh, and so all, I, all I'm able to do, because I had a Kickstarter. Yes. It's what you came on the show to do is I thought we were going to help you promote that Kickstarter. And then I learned about all this other stuff. But yeah, the Kickstarter has been taken down, correct? Yep, the Kickstarter was taken down. Why? Because the Kickstarter had two Facebook pages, and I had over 17,000 uh, fans on one Facebook page alone. Well, this guy, Joseph Dolezal, contacted Facebook and said, I own Jordan Maxwell, period. So take it down now. So my two Facebook pages were taken down. Then I had three versions of a YouTube a promo video for the Kickstarter. He contacted YouTube and take them down. I had one promo video on the on the Kickstarter for Vim, V I M E O Vimo uh, promo. They took and they took that down. I had a Twitter account for the for the Kickstarter. He contacted Twitter and they took that down. Now I'm told that he's in the process of getting the Kickstarter taken down immediately. Uh, because he wants to destroy my work and he wants to own it all, period. And so my attorney said, well then, look it, just drop the Kickstarter because he's going to take it down, it's going to come down, but the one thing he cannot touch, and he's tried to over and over and it don't work, is my, uh, is the uh, only presence I have on the web, is called Jordan Maxwell mm -hmm. Show. It's a podcast. But the reason he can't touch that is because I don't own him. I, uh, uh, when we first did the first podcast, I knew this thug criminal uh, is going to come out of this radio show and take it down. So I signed it over and gave the rights to uh, someone else. So uh, that other person owns my mm -hmm. radio show. Therefore... He cannot say that, he, uh, that it's mine and he can take it down. No, it belongs to someone else, and he's really going to have to fight in court to do that. So he can't take it down. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting, because I took the Kickstarter down, because it's going to come down anyway, and just put a donate button on my website and say, if you want to help Jordan Maxwell, then just donate, because the Kickstarter is not going to work. Okay, and just so people know, it, you do not go to jordanmaxwell.com. You go no. to, what's the, what's the, pro, it's jordanmaxwellshow.com. That's it, exactly. Jordanmaxwell.com does not belong to me for four years. All the products that have been sold, all the donations going in, all God. the private emails going to jordanmaxwell.com, 
goes wow. to a, a ponytail criminal who's going to jail. God, what a fucking a disaster. Was, yeah, it's an incredible disaster. But I didn't know. I'm an old man. I guess some young guy comes in and says, I want to help you. And I needed help, so I accepted him as a friend and turned around and found out, no, he came in as a criminal. That's why it's not shocking that he would do the things he's doing because he was already a criminal. I didn't know that. Right. It's very suspicious, him. too. It's very suspicious why someone like that would, would find someone who specifically deals with this type of research at such a high level. It's very suspicious that this kind of character would find his way to you. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking mm -hmm. the same thing, and that's what my attorney said. He said, this looks awful dark. This this very well might be something more than, than what you think it is, but I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of it. Give me this case. We've got him on fraud. We've got him on misrepresentation, wire fraud. We've got him on six different uh, cases of wire fraud, accepting, uh, uh, accepting donations in your name, misrepresentation presentation of material facts. We've got him with torturous interference. We've got him on this, got him on that. This guy is going to jail. And he said, so give it to me, I'll do it. So, but I have to pay the attorney. He's already put a lot of money out of his own pocket. I appreciate it, but I do want to pay my attorney. And if I can make enough to pay him, I would also like to continue the radio show. But that right. costs money. And see, the people who, uh, who have been working on my jordanmaxwellshow.com they're free podcasts well the people who are doing that have been doing it for free the station has been giving it, me the time and they have the facilities and everything and the other people working on the website for it have been doing it for free but the station has come to the point where they said no longer we can no longer do it for free and i'm ashamed to ask the, the people to continue to work on the website for free so I have to pay them some, make some sort of a stand, but making some sort of a payment to the station and to the people so I can continue to do the podcast. Mm. But all of that costs money. But the first thing, first, I need to get rid of this criminal out of my life. And he's not the only one. It's his brother and his father. All three of them are criminals because they own a company called Momentum Development, and they have taken everything from me and taken it all. So I've got a good wow. attorney now, I've got a good lawyer, top of my guy, and, and he's going after him. But i got to pay him, and I don't have anything. I live from one day to the next uh, with a friend of mine. I have nothing. So that's why I took that, okay. uh, you know, they put that button on Jordan Maxwell's show. But stay away from jordanmaxwell.com and buy nothing from there, because none of it for four years has gone to me. None of it. God. What a sad and shocking story. It's so frustrating, especially for someone like me, but after all the work that you have done, a whole lifetime of work, a lifetime you cannot get back, some fucking kid is just is just screwing with you, man. And it's it's such a disservice that you've helped so many people, you've given knowledge to so many individuals that one guy, it only takes one asshole Yep. Uh, to really screw that up and to affect you in a really personal way, and okay. it's a damn shame. And I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to be a human being with someone like that, man. I just, it's, it's such a shame because uh, I am such a fan of your work. Well, I know I feel the same way, but his brother, his brother is is uh, what's his name, uh, Jacob, J A K U B, Jacob, because they're from the Czech Republic. And, uh, and so his brother's name is Jacob. His name is Joseph, J-O-S-E-F, Joseph Dolezal. And that's on the web. You can just go to the, to, like I said, to the trademark department and to the copyright department and go on the web. Uh, it's, uh, my, my lawsuit's out there. It's on the court of records. It's all out there on, on the web. Okay. So I don't need but, to censor anything you've said in the past uh, 10, 15 minutes? Say it again. I said, so I don't need to censor anything you've said in the past 15 minutes or so. Do no, it's all out there? All. All. Okay, because sometimes with court cases, you never know. Yeah, no, 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 it's all out there. It's all out in the public. Okay. But, um, <clears throat> so anyway, his, his brother, Jacob, calls me on the phone uh, a couple of years ago. 
and says, Jordan, you need to come over here. We need to talk to you. That's the, well, we, that means his father, his brother, and, and, and they want to talk to me. So I go over to the house, and he says, look it, we got a new deal for you, old man. The new deal is this. I'm going to be, Jacob says, I'm going to be your new manager, and I'm going to be your, your, your agent. And I'm going to get you on radio shows, and I'm going to get you speaking engagements at conferences, and you're going to get off your lazy ass and get out there and start making this family some money. So get off your lazy ass, old man. We own you. That's what his word worth to me at 74, at 73 years old. Wow. So, you know, 28-year-old pup talking to a 70-year-old man. And my lawyer says also we have them on elder abuse, financial elder abuse. That carries a penalty, too. I'm 74 years old and being talked to like that by Jacob Dolezal. I've been, you know, my money, everything's been taken from me. Wow. So... I, I have, uh, you know, I have faith that eventually it's all going to come out, and when it does, they're going to jail. Yeah, what a what a wild story. Yep. That, that's so sad, man. But I know I personally have been wondering, you know, for the, for quite some time where you've been. I haven't heard very many interviews from you come out, so I, I definitely have been wondering. It's good to have the air cleared. Well, that's the reason. Right. But I'll tell you the reason why you haven't heard from me, because anything I do is going to draw attention to my website, jordanmaxwell.com, to which they will benefit from. So I'm sure there's a lot of research you've done in the past four years that you have just haven't been able to get out there, a lot more current stuff that you haven't been able to talk about. No, no, no. I have, I have a terabyte. I've got 12, oh my God. I've got 12 different external hard drives. Half of them are four terabytes, and the other half are two and one terabyte. Oh. And I have a terabyte, which is a thousand gigs, waiting for the day when I get my website back and get someone to handle my website for me that I can trust, because I've got hundreds and hundreds of, of new documents, all kinds of dark oh. stuff that nobody's ever heard of. I've been working behind the scenes, hoping that one day I'll get my life back, my name, my work, my website, my money, my products. I'll get it all back one day well, uh, before I leave this world. At 74 years old, I'd like to leave this world with intact. I'd like to have what belongs to me, given back to me, and this thug goes to jail. And it's so That's important. important. It's so important for the conspiracy community to hear that and to, you know, we sit and we listen a lot. We do a lot of listening in this educational circle jerk. It's what I've been calling it. But there are times for action on a massive scale and on a small scale. And this is one of them. You know, Jordan is not a young man and he's got mountains of information he'd love to give to you. But, you know, he's being raked over the coals. And this is a time to try to help somebody out who has helped you out for for decades so i would like to see the conspiracy community come together for just this purpose to give back to somebody who's given a lot to us and hopefully i don't know what exactly people can do to further things along but at least just support the man and support this situation and let's get it resolved and let's get to that new information while jordan's still around to give it to us yeah, and there's a lot of stuff out there, uh, you, know, uh, you know, about me. All kinds of stories and lies and half truths and innuendos about me. Uh, you know, I, I've been maligned by so many people out there. Uh, people who dream up stuff about me that have no idea who I am, never met me, but they say things about me, and then other people pick that up and say, "Oh, really? Okay," and then they put it out there. And before you know it, somebody else is, uh, picks up on it. And before you know it, all over the world, there's all kinds of lies, distortions about me, and I sit on the floor with nothing. And yeah. so people who actually know me come to visit me and see me. They know who I am. They know what's happened. But the world at large is only given so much to understand, and there's so much out there that is derogatory and lying and deception and uh, and, I, and I know why because he told me Joseph Dolezal said I'm going to ruin your name out there you think you're going to walk away from me 
and you're going to do this, and you're going to do that, old man. You ain't doing nothing. I'm going to disgrace your name. I'll dream up anything I want, put it out there, because I'm from the Czech Republic, and I don't give a damn about your American laws. I don't care about your laws. The money. Wow. You're going to make me money. And so he puts stuff out on me and puts it on my own website and puts out stuff like the, the Jordan Maxwell Master Defrauder and all kinds of, and then the world picks that up, and now they're going out and talking about stuff that he put out, and uh, and so I just sit here watching my life and my name and my work and everything I've worked for being raped, destroyed, uh, libeled, and, uh, and, and, you know, so I just sit here in the last days of my life watching some young punk uh, destroy everything I've ever worked for. Gosh. So, you know, I just say, well, whatever. Do the best I can. Well, you are a living legend, and you definitely have my respect. And I don't have a lot of resources, but I've told you off the air, if there's ever anything I can do or in any way I can be helpful, or if you ever want to come on the show and address anything that's going on and you don't have really a way to get out on the Internet or whatever, whatever I can do, I'm, I'll am i always be willing to help you out, man. I well, appreciate it. Thank I'm, you. I'm sure so many other people feel that way, too. But this has been an amazing time. You know, you told us so much information, and hearing the personal story is you know, it's really sad, but, uh, you know, I'm glad that there's some clarity on it because people have been wondering. So, Well, just remember, yeah, just remember, do not have anything whatsoever to do at all with JordanMaxwell.com. Okay. Because that website for four years has been in the hands of a criminal that has taken everything from me. Okay. And so anything that goes to that website goes to him and his family. And so if you want to contact me, if you want to uh, follow anything I'm doing, the only presence I have on the web is Jordan Maxwell Show. Okay. And unfortunately, I have decided not to take any more comments because I, I know I, I, I'm very hurt by the ridicule and the, and the, uh, the, the things which are said to me by those who don't mind hurting other people. Mm. So, uh, you know, like I said, I got a, 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 I got an email saying, why don't you get a coffin and go lay down and die somewhere? God. That hurts me because I've tried to do all my life. So I decided, you know what? I just don't want to hear any more comments, period. I, I'm tired of hearing comments by people who couldn't care less. They don't know me. And I've got a lot of comments saying, why don't you just talk to us about your work? We don't give a damn about your private life. No care of the you are. So I just pulled down the comments. But if you have a comment, you want to say, you know, something of value, just go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, and you can send in, a, you can send in an email, and I'll get it. So, okay. Well, that's good to know. So that's good. To know. That's all I can say. And of course, I got a donation button there too. If you want to have it, then that would be nice too, because I got a lawyer. I got a thing. All right. Well, in a, in a radio show, I got a picture. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jordan, it's been great talking to you. I I don't want to take up any more of your time. It's been quite a while already. So thanks so much. You are welcome back anytime. The door is wide open. It's been an honor for me and a milestone on my journey. So take care of yourself. Thanks so much, and good luck with all your troubles, man. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. There we have it, people, an honor and a privilege to spend a little time with a guy like Jordan Maxwell, although he's starting to sound a little like Michael Rupert, so please send the man some love, at least, and let him know today's talk had an impact on you. A new money bomb has started, and we're off to the races. And if you know and love the website Reddit like I do, I've been trying to make the THC subreddit an official forum and also a great source of exposure and everyone is free to share interesting stuff and talk to each other and all that. You can also leave me a voicemail at thehiresidechats.com on the sidebar and I can play any interesting ones on the air, share the show and help it grow. We're getting bigger and stronger every day and I'm really excited about the future possibilities. Some great shows coming down the pike. May your worries be gone and your pimp hands be strong. Another THC in the bag, and I'll see you soon, people. Take care of yourselves. It's rough out there.